Welcome to this video on Omega Diagrams and the Calculation of Cross-Section Constant and Stress in Warping Torsion. This is one of several videos in a short course on cross-section analysis posted at Tiryaz Toolbox, a website that contains notes, examples, and algorithms for structural analysis. Please visit the website for more videos and other material relevant for this course. There are a number of quantities that may be of interest in a cross-section analysis. Many of them are shown on this slide, but the scope in this video is more limited. The objective here is to establish the omega diagram for warping torsion. Once that diagram is determined, we wish to determine the cross-section constant for warping torsion, Cw. The distribution of the axial stress also follows from the omega diagram. Finally, we wish to determine the shear flow and shear stress. Those are derived from change in the axial stress, as we do in cross-section analysis for Euler-Bernoulli beam theory. The next slide gives a summary of warping torsion, which is the subject of one video in the short course on structural members posted at Tier Yes Toolbox. In this video, we primarily address thin-walled cross-sections as the ones shown on the left-hand side. Notice that both open and closed cross-sections appear here. From the note and video on warping torsion, we have the following two equations. The cross-section constant for warping torsion is the integral of omega squared. The formula for the axial stress in the cross-section has the same form as the axial stress formula in Euler-Bernoulli beam bending, except the moment is here replaced with the by moment, B also, the moment of inertia is replaced with Cw. And the cross-section coordinate is replaced with the omega diagram, which can be interpreted as an abstract cross-section coordinate. The rectangle at the bottom of this slide shows two ways in which the by moment can be determined. One is to use the solution to the differential equation for torsion for some specific beam case. In that case, we calculate the by moment by using the derivative, phi prime, in this formula for the by moment, from warping torsion theory. Another way, which relates to computational structural analysis is shown below. When we include both St. Venant torsion and warping torsion, then the element has four degrees of freedom, two at each end. One of those two degrees of freedom is the torsional rotation. The other is related to warping torsion and the by moment. The two opposing double arrows actually represents one degree of freedom, which is the derivative of the torsional rotation, phi. Notice from the expression for B, given immediately above, that the by moment and phi prime are indeed directly related. Also remember that an ordinary beam element in bending has two degrees of freedom at each end. One is the displacement. The other is the derivative of the displacement, which we call rotation. Again, we notice how the template for warping torsion is similar to beam bending, here in the sense that phi and the derivative of phi are the degrees of freedom at each end of the element. In short, carrying out a computational structural analysis with this element is another way to obtain the by moment that is needed for the calculation of stress in the formula at the top. The next slide delves into the details of how to establish the omega diagram. Remember, more examples are posted at Tier Yes Toolbox. For a better understanding, also keep in mind that the final omega diagram actually shows the warping, that is, axial deformation, in the cross section. From the video on warping torsion in the short course on structural members posted at Tier Yes Toolbox, we have this expression for omega for open cross sections. That video also provided these three conditions that the final omega diagram must satisfy. Let us consider the wide flange beam on the right-hand side as an example. Think of the omega diagram being formed by sweeping along each cross-section part with a ray that emanates from the shear center. For this double symmetric cross-section we already know the location of the shear center. For double symmetric cross-sections the shear center coincides with the centroid. In this business, we adopt the rule that clockwise sweeps add positive contributions to the omega diagram and counterclockwise sweeps give negative contributions. One more thing to keep in mind before we start is that we cannot have jumps, that is, discontinuities in the omega diagram. Because the diagram actually gives the warping of the cross section, a discontinuity would imply a sudden jump in the axial displacement in the cross section. Consider the left part of the top flange in the middle cross-section. 
We arbitrarily select to start with this part, and we arbitrarily select to start the ray of the sweep vertically and sweep counterclockwise, as shown here. The counterclockwise sweep gives a negative value, indicated by the minus sign. The value at the edge of the flange is h over 2 times b over 2. That is because the lowercase h in the formula is the distance from the shear center to the tangent line of the part we are considering. That value is h over 2, in this case, because h is the total height of the cross section. b over 2 appears because the infinitesimal length ds in the formula in this case is integrated over half the flange width, b next, we consider the right hand side part of the top flange. Notice that we have now anchored the value of the omega diagram by starting on the left side. That means we must start at zero at the top of the web when we now sweep the right hand side part as shown here. For the web, the lowercase h in the formula is zero because that part goes through the shear center. That means we can now start sweeping the lower flange, again with clockwise sweep giving positive value, as seen on the left hand side. Let us take a step back and examine this omega diagram. Does it satisfy the first condition? Yes, the integral over the entire cross section of this diagram is zero. The positive parts cancel out the negative parts. This omega diagram was also drawn with sweeping rays emanating from the shear center. That means the last two conditions are satisfied as well. We will return to this point on the next slide. In short, we have now actually established the final omega diagram for a wide flange beam. This is exactly how such a cross section warps. The figure on the right hand side shows the result if we had started with a clockwise sweep at the very leftmost edge of the top flange. The result of that sweep is shown with the plus sign in this triangle. When we now sweep the web, we still have that the lowercase h from the formula is zero. However, in this case the starting point at the top of the web is not zero. That value must now be maintained all through the web, as shown by this straight shape. The sweeping of the lower flange must also use that value as a starting point, at the intersection between the web and the flange. The result is ok as a trial omega diagram, but it is not the final one. To obtain that, we need to normalize it, using one of the conditions listed on the left hand side. On the next slide we utilize those conditions to develop the formulas needed when the trial omega diagram is not normalized, and the shear center location is unknown before we draw the diagram. The idea is that we first draw a trial diagram, and then modify it to obtain the final one. For this purpose, it is useful to establish an expression that relates the omega diagram drawn about an arbitrary trial point, here labeled y trial, z trial, to another diagram drawn about the shear center. Since the omega values consist of accumulated double sector areas, which is what we call h times ds in the formula for omega, it is of interest to study a generic infinitesimal contribution. To that end, the figure identifies, by means of gray shading, the omega contributions for an infinitesimal length ds of the cross section. The double area of the sector that originates in the shear center is the first formula on this slide. The double area of the sector that originates at the trial point is the next formula. The two gray shaded contributions in the figure are then subtracted, followed by integration of infinitesimal contributions in order to find an expression for the difference in actual omega diagrams. Capital C is the integration constant. Solving for the omega diagram drawn about the shear center, from now onwards denoted simply by omega, gives the formula in the blue box. This is the formula for the final omega diagram, expressed in terms of a trial diagram. There are three unknowns in this expression. They are the two shear center coordinates YSC and ZSC, plus the constant, C. The three conditions that we saw on the previous slide determine those unknowns. In practical terms, that is done by substituting the trial omega diagram into the equation for these conditions, which is done in the three equations at the bottom of this slide. Notice that terms cancel in the integration because y and z are principal axes that originate at the centroid of the cross section. The result is the three formulas on the right hand side for c, zsc, and ysc, marked with red. That leads to the following procedure for the determination of the final omega diagram. First, 
select an arbitrary trial point in the cross section. Second, draw the trial omega diagram about that trial point, as we did on the previous slide. Start the sweeps wherever you want. Third, determine C, ZSC, and YSC from the formulas on this slide. Fourth, substitute those values into the blue marked formula to obtain the final omega diagram. The next slide amends the formula for the omega diagram by considering closed cross sections. This was done in the video on warping torsion in the short course on structural members, with the result shown here. H bar is the so called shear ratio, which is a constant that may vary from wall to wall of the cross section. Notice that AM is the area within the center lines of the walls of the cross section and T is the thickness of the part that you are sweeping across. When you sweep another part, then T may be different. While this may seem complicated, it is simply a matter of subtracting H bar from the omega value every time you have done a sweep of a part of the cross section. Notice that when you establish the trial and final omega diagram for a closed cross section, it must be continuous. If you arrive where you started the sweeps with a different value than what you started with, then a mistake has been made. This is proven mathematically in the document on warping torsion posted at Tier Yes Toolbox and serves as a good check of whether H bar has been correctly calculated. Once we have the omega diagram for a cross section, we can calculate the cross section constant for warping torsion, which is addressed on the next slide. The formula shows that the constant is the integral over the cross section of omega squared. If you are familiar with calculating displacements by means of the principle of virtual forces, then that may help you calculate CW. That is because virtual work is also an integral of something times something. In the principle of virtual forces, what is integrated is virtual moment times real curvature. To evaluate that integral, you may be familiar with this table of quick integration formulas that give the value of the integral. These formulas can be directly applied to the shapes of the omega diagram, as is done in the examples posted at Tier Yes Toolbox. Notice in the upper right corner of this slide that the stress is easily calculated once the cross-section constant is available. Notice that the axial stress varies according to the warping of the cross-section, namely according to the final omega diagram. The next slide addresses shear stress. Although the principal characteristic of warping torsion is torque carried by axial stress, shear stress also appear in warping torsion. This is the same as in beam theory for bending, where shear stress is not part of the boundary value problem. However, it is dictated by equilibrium with axial stress that varies along the beam. The first equation on this slide expresses equilibrium in the horizontal direction. Dividing through by dx and ds gives the next equation, which is expressed in terms of shear flow, qs. That is the same symbol as is adopted for shear flow in the video on cross-section analysis for beams in bending. That result is integrated along the s-axis in the equation below. By substituting the formula for axial stress in warping torsion, which appeared in the upper right corner of the previous slide, we ultimately find this expression for shear flow. A new quantity, capital Q omega is introduced. In the same manner as capital Q is used for the first moment of area of a portion of the cross section in the calculation of shear stress due to bending, capital Q omega is the integral of omega at selected points along the S axis. Notice that the expression for the by moment from an early slide in this video gives this expression for its derivative. Because the video on warping torsion in the short course on structural members demonstrated that the torque on the cross section is the derivative of the by moment, we arrive at this formula for the shear flow due to warping torsion, expressed in terms of the torque on the cross section. The determination of shear stress from warping torsion in closed, instead of open cross sections is a statically indeterminate problem, similar to what is encountered for closed cross sections subjected to shear force. Shear stress from warping torsion for closed cross sections is not addressed in this video. To summarize the shear stress calculations in torsion theory, the next slide shows the distribution of stress across the wall of thin walled cross sections, including both St. Venant torsion and warping torsion. The St. Venant theory applied to closed cross sections give a uniform shear stress distribution over the thickness. That theory applied to open cross-sections give a linearly varying stress across the thickness. Conversely, 
The portion of the torque carried by warping torsion results in a uniform shear stress distribution over the thickness, regardless of whether the cross-section is open or closed. The final slide reminds us that a modified theory for warping torsion can be developed. This point mirrors the amendment of Euler-Bernoulli beam theory with shear deformations, referred to as Timoshenko beam theory. That is done in the document on warping torsion posted at Tier Yes Toolbox, but simply mentioned here in passing. A key characteristic of the modified theory is that both shear and axial stresses are considered in the same boundary value problem. This is new and highlighted in the figure on this slide. Remember, only axial strains and stresses are considered in Euler Bernoulli beam theory and the warping theory behind this video. Conversely, the St. Venant warping theory is formulated purely in terms of shear stresses. The figure illustrates the point that in the combined boundary value problem, which includes shear deformation, both cases are considered. Thanks for watching this video. Please visit Tiryaz Toolbox for more videos and more material relevant for the modern structural engineer. See you soon!